this right here. Let it go. I'm waiting. I'm waiting right there. There you go. There it is. There you go. Wow. How'd that feel? Great. Yeah. You haven't. That hasn't moved in a while. I'm gonna go pass out now. <laughs> Hey, doing, my friend? Great. How are you? I'm glad you made it here. Tell me about yourself. Um, you had an accident when you were 20. Right. Go over that a little bit with me. Um, so it was a four-car accident. I got sandwiched in the middle at a red light. Somebody stopped at a green light, calls that car to hit him. I hit them. They hit me. Um, you know, I walked it off. I was fine. I, it did like $9,000 worth of damage. A lot of damage. They, they fixed the truck, whatever. But ever since then, my thoracic back has bothered me very tight all the time. Literally, I, I explain it, I feel like I, my relief, like I need to grab something or be pulled apart. Like I just feel like I'm tight, very tight all the time. You were told you have degenerative disc disease. So at in 2012, 2012, which, so that's what, nine years ago. So I would have been about 32, 31, something, about 31 years old. Gotcha. Uh, I went because I was having issues and they did MRIs, they did and diagnosed the degenerative disc disease. Was there symptoms going down your leg? Uh, yeah, just the, a lot of achiness. Like when I when I, I do get fatigued, I get a lot of this just this achy yep. that goes Tooth down achy, my leg. Deep, yeah. Right. So it's nerve that deep ache pain is, right. is when you got nerve pressure. Um, did and they took an MRI then, and they or they took an MRI earlier than then, or they took it then in, in thirty. I, I believe that's when I was like having all, and they took two thousand and twelve. That's when I was like having those issues. And gotcha. They did the MRI. All right. And then they told you at that point that you had scoliosis. No, actually, I just did. I started going to a chiropractor uh, about 2019. Okay. And I've been seeing them regularly, and they did some X-rays and stuff, and they said that I have the scoliosis. Okay. Very mild. We'll, we'll talk about it. There's, there's two. I have scoliosis, which is a structural scoliosis. Right. I had mine was developed when I was a teenager. When you're growing, your bones grow faster than your spinal cord. Right. So it buckles to relieve pressure off the spinal cord, but. Sometimes when we have injury, like the severity that you're talking about, right. your body will have an injury and then you'll create a scoliosis because you're in pain. Right. And I was hurting and that walk it off you said was your body, there we go, I got, right. I, I, and so your body adjusted and created what we call a functional scoliosis and that might be what it is. I mean, I, I'll right. work on you and I'll assess you, but many times there's avoidance because Ed, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, I have right. achiness in my leg, my body's trying to right. alleviate that. Like I said, yeah, your left shoulder is mm -hmm. high. Yeah, left. You're all avoiding this left side of your back here. Look straight forward. So yeah, you're fine. You're fine. So we're dealing with about three inches, one, two, about two inches head forward. Do you have anything going on in your arms? Uh, uh, in this arm, actually, I get a ton of numbness and pins and needles in my right arm. How long has that been happening? Years. Okay. And nobody's investigated by taking a picture of your neck and no MRIs of your neck. No. Okay. So. In order to have that sensation, we're dealing with a lower neck disc injury. So right. the same, I know they use the word degeneration. I, I'm not right. a big fan of it. I believe a better terminology is desiccated or herniated or the disc is, is cooked. I take a knife or a baseball bat and I beat up a car. Do I call the car diseased? Right. <laughs> no, you've just damaged it. You understand? Damaging something doesn't mean it's degenerated. You understand? It's been cooked, it's been damaged, it's been traumatized, you right. understand? So when we're young, the discs are supposed to be, well, not injured. <laughs> Nucleus and these layers that wrap it. So the first injury is tears or cuts. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. the, the actual annulus gets torn up or like knifed and cut. And then the disc becomes liquefied and then that starts to cook its way through those layers. And then it presents with a bulge, right. you know, and then you actually can start getting the bones will grow, mm -hmm. the disc becomes, and it, very, it looks very similar to bacon. You start cooking it to a soft, flexible, to hard. So the, the thickness of the disc supports open the hole laterally. So you have two different things that can be hit. You can have the spinal cord hit from overhead. Does that make sense? Right. Or you can have the nerve being pinched because the height of the disc becomes mm -hmm. compressed. At your age, it's much more likely that you're getting what we call nerve root pressure. So the bulging disc is hitting the nerve, and that's what radiates down into your arm, pressure on that nerve. You could have, this is where an MRI needs to be done to figure out if it's right. pressure on your spinal cord or if it's pressure on the nerve root. Okay. The spinal cord has no sensation, so pressure on the spinal cord actually causes the spinal cord to get damaged, and then that causes numbness. Is the numbness all the time or intermittent? Is it numb right now? No, it's not numb right now. Okay. But if I was to go and uh, 
do anything for a success, you know, any t- amount of time. It could be anything. It could be driving. It could be a gotcha. uh, tool. Then, yeah. It's more likely with that, like if you sleep with your arm above your head, how right. your arm goes numb because right. that's pressuring a nerve. You right. understand? The nerve's not being damaged. It's being squeezed. Right. So we're usually dealing with this nerve has, com- the peripheral nerve has the capacity for regeneration. The spinal cord does not. So when we press on this nerve, you can relieve nerve pressure off of it and it will heal or regenerate slowly. But the peripheral nerve has that capacity for regeneration. The central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, has, if we damage it, it's permanent. So because it comes back, it right. goes numb, it's come back, yeah. it's more likely, again, need an MRI to confirm, yeah. but it's more likely that it's just the nerve roots being pinched because there's a disc injury. We named two of the vertebrae in your spine called the atlas and axis, these top two bones. If they're working properly, your lower neck won't have that injury. The discs won't be injured in your lower neck. Gotcha. You have to have this area stiff, to allow your lower neck to overwork. When you overwork your lower neck, your body tries to go into avoidance. So I I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I get a lot of headaches, like, and it feels like the tension, like a ton of tension back there. So that's a concomitant symptom. Because the head's going forward, there's so much muscular tension. That muscular tension is like me holding a bowling ball in my hands. My muscles are gonna start hurting and burning because they're overstressed. The muscle lactic acid and stress is going to cause the nerves in the area to be aggravated. So it's ultimately postural. Right. But the posture changed because you have a disc injury. So this is where it can become difficult. We have to get your head back to relieve muscle tension. But as we bring your head back, we're going to run into the disc and injury. So we have to do this through a process like orthodontistry. We can't just straighten your teeth in one visit. We have to run a test, see how how you perform, and then we keep incrementally increasing, almost like acclimating to a to a mountain you can't just go up to 25,000 feet you gotta let's see how you do at 10,000 feet and I got headaches okay let's go down to 8,000 feet let's stay here for a couple weeks okay I'm okay at 8,000 now we go up to 10,000 again and we work up this mountain it's highly likely that it's a functional scoliosis unless you knew you had a scoliosis when you were a teenager yeah, does that yeah. make sense yeah it's just probability wise <laughs> it could be it could be you formed a structural curve <laughs> but usually that's not possible because right. you're already fully grown to 26 do you understand? Right. If it didn't form, if this, the growth plates solidified at 26. If you didn't have a scoliosis at 26 and you have one after 26, right. that's functional. Your body's saying, ow, and now you have a scoliosis because you're in avoidance. Right. All right, deep breath in for me. Head back for me. Exhale. Let it go. Here we go. Yeah, we got work to do. Deep breath in. Head back. Exhale. Deep breath in. Here we go. One more. They're moving. They're just quiet. Yeah. And just told us off. I think we got two, bo- two bones <laughs> moving there. Have you had somebody check that area before? I'm not sure. Nobody's ever tried to adjust that? Um, yeah, I get the normal adjustment, the neck crack, the side. But the, when they do that, right. but when they do, that do, they, do they notice that stiffness that we just found? They do. They all, they all talk about the stiffness. And what do they say? What do they want to do about it? No, but they get massages to try to, Okay. Know, but well, we have to fix that. Right. That, that it's imperative. There is no way we can stop the stress on your lower back if we don't get that unlocked. Your entire treatment is that. Right. Not just like, okay, it's tight. Oh, well, let's go somewhere else. No, that's the entire show. Right. The entire show is unlocking that, and then once we get it unlocked, keeping it loose. It wasn't just a little bit of stiffness in there. Right. It's okay. I'm sorry that, that you know, Carpenter, I get it. You've been tight, but we got to unlock that. Right. Exhale. A little bit, other side for me. Right, good, face up for me, okay, good. This is way too jammed up up here, gee whiz. Yeah, and I think they're always messing with the bottom of yeah. my neck pretty much. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We can't help a sprained ankle by further spraining it. All right, I'm just trying to just really unlock this upper neck a little bit. All right. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, total. Wow, okay, yeah, 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 okay, all right. It isn't beneficial to further loosen the parts of your neck that are already loose. The goal is to loosen what's tight. Right. It's stiff and it's difficult. Like right there, I feel that. I almost can name this thing. That's, <laughs> it's like a feature of the landscape. Hills and valleys. This is, this is my. Oh no, that's my statue. And I. Uh, <laughs> I built a mound here. Uh, 
I opened your front door and there's just a dresser standing there in your in your front doorway. I'm like, who put the dresser here? Oh no, it's great. I grabbed my sock. But, right? You know, it feels good to have validation because for so long I've hurt. And yeah, no. it's always been like, oh no, you're fine. You're no, no, so I, 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 mm-hmm. I grew up riding dirt bikes and stuff. I actually broke both of my legs when I was 17 in a dirt bike accident. Uh huh. So. Jeez. I've had, yeah, lots Jeez. of broken bones. Yeah, yeah. so your body. People still just told you you're fine. Walking <laughs> off, yeah. Walking off, you broke legs. And, and then let alone what happened to your back. Do you understand? Right. So the amount of force that went into your leg that broke your leg, some of that force got transmitted to L5. Right. Let's do it, baby. Here we go. I mean, that is not a small featurette. That's a... Mm-mm. Right there. Hello. Your neck is supposed to be curved. This is the lordosis way back, way back here is where your neck belongs. If the arch was in your neck, the upper neck is the loosest. So when there's an arch in your neck, the actual vertebrae in the lower neck interlock, not allowing them to rotate. They actually have, that makes sense, they all connect together and you mm-hmm. can't rotate them because they're all wow. connected together. In order to rotate in your lower neck, in order to stress your lower neck, and in order to have a disc herniation in your lower neck, you have to first have a functioning moving lower neck. That necessitates the loss of the curve, which fans the spinuses. The, the spinous processes fan out when you tuck your chin down. That allows for individual move, movement of those lower cervical vertebrae, you understand? So loss of cervical curve unlocks the lower neck. The upper neck gets tighter because the head goes forward. So the attachments in your muscles in your neck attach up on your occiput. That tightness of your upper neck locks where, where your neck was intended to move. Now you can start the process of overcooking your lower neck. So this is, especially on your, not as bad over here. Get the idea? And then on this oh, right yeah, side, yeah. you've got your poster child right here, whatever you want to call that, and this is just... Name of Junior. Yeah, Junior over here. No, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot in here. There's a lot right, right there. Yeah, dear. That. Mm-hmm. Carlin, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that as a wound, as a scar on the side of your atlas on the right, it is allowing your lower neck to com- compensate, so you have compensatory injury. Yeah, right there. Hello. Hello. There it is. Well, it's like I can look in the mirror and see that I slouch to one side. Correct. And then, like nobody else ever notices that I'm yes. leaning to one side. There you go. There it is. There you go. Wow. How'd that feel? Great. Yeah, you haven't, that hasn't moved in a while. <laughs> because of the school year. Well, you had that school year. So oh, boy, here always we go. Be tight. Oh, boy, here we go. All right, so the heart's on your left side. We don't ever really see a left curve in the thoracic. It's always to the right because right. it's got to get away from the heart. I was told by professors in school that they have seen left ones, but the patients don't live very long. When I look at your back, it's all elevated here on the left upper. That's the highest part of his back is elevated. So. It's, it's not, it's this, it would be to the right. We have to get the back. Now, I do see it crooked. It's definitely crooked. Right. And so we can call it a laterality. If it, here's where it can get a little sneaky with x-rays. X-rays are like me taking my hand and shining a light on my hand and then looking at the wall. Right. Okay? If my hand is rotated a little bit, mm-hmm. when I take, when I shine the light, my hand on the wall will look weird. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when they're, when we're taking an x-ray, it's imperative that you're perfectly lined up on the bucky. Uh, right. You understand? understand? If you're rotated just 5 degrees, 10 degrees, you'll right. create a scoliosis because you're, you, weren't ro- you were not positioned properly. Right. Now, part of that might not be, probably isn't the doctor's fault. Right. You were in pain when they took an x-ray. Yeah. Does that make sense? I so, standing probably how I was today, right? Correct. So you're in pain, you're taking an x-ray, and you're in avoidance, which creates a scoliosis when you take an x-ray. A better way would be an MRI to see if there's, you understand, it doesn't, right. it, we just take a picture of your MRI and see what you look like laying down. 
or, or seated, you know, and see if there's a scoliosis while you're in a seated position on MRI. Anyway, but I I'm not denying that we could that there was a laterality, but it's right. there's so many. Uh, it's okay. It's just I'm. A, don't get me started on X-rays. <laughs> I'm just gonna work on him. I'm just gonna. Here we go. He he, he flew down here to get here. I'm gonna give him as much as I give him in my time. His gee whiz. And teach you how to stretch and. All right. So I like think about those things all day. I try to think about my posture, but I, I don't even think I can make myself. Stand Correct. Up straight. Correct. It's not consciously right. possible. What you have to have is. I mean, be as try to avoid the worst postures as best you can. Maybe right. there are like my dad when he taught me how to work on people's backs how to do this work, protecting my own spine, creating good habits. Right. But at the end of the day, you have to counter stretch your back so that we our body doesn't slowly incrementally change into a forward position right. or into avoidance. And we have to have your spine limber enough in order to safely even do that. Your back is not limber. It's about as far from limber <laughs> as a back that I've ever seen in here. That is stiff and oh my That's Lord. That's where most of my pain is all the time. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> it feels like it's just up, like knotted up into a freaking big ball. Yes, that would be an accurate description. Yeah, I'll get it. I mean, I can't. I'm, he's not even. He's not even. He's not even breathing hard. Look at this guy. This guy's like a freaking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And he's breathing. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll see if I can. Nope, he's just too strong. This is. Do you feel discomfort? Does it feel good? It feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's been waiting it's for like, this. What feel? Yeah, I like, like, literally, like, I can just have my wife, like, just put her knees in my back when I sit on her. And just that pressure. Yeah. Feels better. Right. Right there. Yep. I can feel that. Breathe, huh? Look at that contraction right there. Quadratus borum on the right here is all protective spasms. That's got to be unlocked. Interesting. That, I wonder if that was the original injury that, you know, Something right here. Mm -hmm. That does not. There's like three. Bloop, bloop, bloop. There's dents and dings in here. Oh, man. Breathe. Yeah, let's get it. Just untangling this. I had to unlock all of this. It got injured and then it quit. It's not allowed to live the rest of your life. Quit. It's got to be a participating member of your team. The king of knots. Uh -huh. oh, My name is King Knot. <laughs> and I think like everybody's focused so much time over here. It's like, and none over here. I can feel it over there. Jeez. I think the Winnie the Pooh. You know, you know. <laughs> now there's a thing in where Piglet cuts this rope into six pieces, and Rabbit goes, "Piglet, can you tie a knot?" He goes, "I cannot." And then. Then one of them says, oh, so you cannot. No, no, I cannot not. No, I can't tie a knot. That's something I can do. I can tie a bow. <laughs> Watch 
this? Abra? <laughs> Kadabra. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I'm just saying, that's, that's, that's how quickly it's going to come out of there. There's a lot from here to here. This allows your lower back to overstress. This is supposed to be the first part of your back that arrives to work. So you have your okay. employees and you have their scheduled times of work. Right. He's supposed to arrive at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and he's supposed to leave at midnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's supposed to be your hardest worker. Okay. And he, I came in here and he's sleeping. Got you. These are old injuries that have not been untangled and left to just quit and tighten themselves up and become bound up and not functioning anymore. And right. Now your lower back's had to just make up for all the work that this area was not doing and quit. You know, usually in the mornings I'm very, very stiff. And then as I, I stretch out and I get myself going, I can start to feel okay. But then when, usually when like midday hits, that's when I'm like, it feels like my mid back is just in a big giant sure. bowl. Well, we, this is where midday we got to start feeding yourself. So I want you to, we're going to get a roller, you understand? Yep. And you have to, maybe not a full 20 minute session, but at right. least a five minute okay. session where you feed your back. I think of it like your stomach. You, you wouldn't expect your stomach to be able to go all day till dinner and not right. feed it, right? Well, my stomach was killing me about 3 p.m. It was killing me. Right. Well, did you put any food in there? Right. No, I didn't eat all day. Hmm. Well, we have to feed your back, especially right. doing something like carpentry where, you know, that's a you're an athlete, you know, kind of idea. You're putting a lot of stress on your back. Right. Mechanically, we need to take time where you can spend five minutes and safely unlock your back a little bit. Yeah, this is the most trauma, right? This whole section right here. This whole section was injured, and that's why he's leaning away from it. Yeah, that is, that is. Boop. That doesn't make any feel a difference. Yeah. Feel smooth. Yeah. That's smooth. I don't have a single. Look at my thumb. Crumb. Look. There is no speed bump. I can't if I see, yeah, fall off of it right 15 there. 15 mile per hour zone. There's a lump. Right. You see it pops up there and then over it. This this was hit. This was hit here, and then that section right here. This is abusing because this is locked. It's right. Is the lock. Whew. Yeah. That's what you're dealing with in there. Yeah. That is. I can feel the heat from it. That's all blocked up. We've yeah. got to get that out of there and then keep it out of there and keep it from building up again. Okay. There it is. Nice. Nice. I got you. Nice. Nice. Good. Breathe. Nice, good. I'm gonna go pass out now. <laughs> <laughs> Tread a little bit to the left. Left, there we go. Okay, almost there. Okay, no, that's, some of yours don't. Tilt your head a little bit left for me. Okay, good. Either that or it's my goodness glued on your skull. Probably. Okay, that's right. probably. Tilt your head a little bit to the right. Okay. Tilt left, all right. 
In order to change the position of your chest, we have to first unlock your chest. And with at the beginning of your adjustment, we started off with maybe 15, 20% of your back working. Right. And now we're right now we're maybe 60%. So it's not even, well, it's better, but I, I want a lot more mobility out of your chest. It takes time to re neutrify and, and loosen up frozen joints. You have right. what I would call frozen mid back, even though that's not something that's Googleable. Something sure. you can Google is frozen shoulder. And the principle of frozen shoulder is somebody injures their shoulder, they don't move their shoulder, it becomes frozen. Right. That same principle can be applied to any joint in your body. I had a boy who broke his femur and they put him in a cast over his knee and so mm -hmm. he couldn't bend his knee. And then he took the cast off after 10 weeks, which I believe to be much longer than it was supposed to be. But right. anyway, 10 weeks, he couldn't bend his knee. Right. And now he needed months of rehab to regain wow. the, the bending of his knee because the knee had been frozen from the cast. Mm -hmm. So you have frozen mid-back. It's, it's joints in there that are frozen and then compensatory injuries in the surrounding areas. Roll upwards. Now put the feet together, knees together, and then you're gonna rotate your knees. There you go, breathe and open up that right side. Get the idea, mm -hmm. right? And eventually your knees touch the ground, eventually. You gotta learn to, and then bring your knees right. Gotcha. About you know five, 10 seconds, knees right, five, 10 seconds, knees left, and then you stay in the middle for about a minute, and okay. then you move down an inch. Yes. Let your body sink into it. There you go. Good. And then bring these back up. And then just stay here in the middle for a little bit. A little bit. It's like a drawer that gets stuck. Sometimes you've got to give it a little bit of a shimmy, jostle, to get the drawer to shut. That's what you're dealing with. There are hinges and joints in here that are frozen. Drag your bottom. There you go. Good. And even the position you're in right now is a very good position for your back. Start. Okay. When you're, you know, sometimes I put the roller underneath your chest. Yep. You know, you stick that underneath your chest and you start practicing your, when you're on your phone or you're just taking a phone call or whatever, you yeah. don't, you don't just spend your life on your couch round and forward. You start introducing in your life some extension. It's the predominance of bending forward, which has locked your spine along with the injuries and right. guarding. And we have to, we got to get your body, you got to get your ear back over your shoulders okay. with the understanding that your body intelligently and purposefully puts your head forward. Right. Your body didn't just do this to annoy you. There are monsters that are back there, like the Shine Down song. Right. The monsters like are running real. from the monsters. <laughs> right. We have, and then, and it's hurting over here now. So it's millimeter by millimeter acclimating. So. So I imagine things will start firing again that aren't work. Working you can, basically, right? And you can find that the injuries that you had will start to be like even after today's treatment, you might say, Ed, I'm feeling an injury I had because I'm opening it up again. Right. So that we can process it and make it actually a functional part of your back again. It's not a functional part. You only have 20% of your back that works. Right. All right, brother. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.